Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we're going to sketch the proof of criterion one. So this is the congruence ideal criterion on isomorphisms of complete intersections. It's the first of two criteria on isomorphisms of complete intersections developed by Wiles to prove R equals T in the proof of Fermat's last theorem. So let's get into it. First, let's recall the setup. So we have a commutative triangle of surjective homomorphisms of complete Noetherian local O algebras with T finite flat over O as follows, okay? So this map here from R to T is a surjective map that we'll call phi. And we have these kind of structural maps from R and T respectively to O called pi sub R and pi sub T. And those are surjective also, and this diagram commutes. Uh, we'll call I sub R the kernel of pi sub R in R here. I sub t will likewise be the kernel of pi sub t, and then eta sub t, this congruence ideal, will be the image of the t annihilator of this kernel here in t under pi sub t, so here now. All right, so let's recall criterion one. Criterion one says the following, suppose that O is a complete discrete valuation ring and that eta sub t isn't zero, then the O length of I sub R mod I sub R squared is at least the O length of O mod A to sub T. And equality holds if and only if phi is an isomorphism of complete intersection rings over O. So you do need a lemma to fully prove this, which I will record here, but I will not go into the details of it because it's particularly kind of uninteresting. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So lemma, let f from a to b be a surjective homomorphism of Noetherian local O algebras such that b is finite flat over O. Suppose that the induced map f bar on the tensor products, so from a tensor k over O to b tensor k over O is actually an isomorphism already. Then f itself is already an isomorphism. Okay, and the proof basically is apply Nakayama's lemma twice. So I'll leave the details there to you. I think this has probably worked out in the Cornell, Silverman, Stevens as well. Okay, so the, the main way we're going to prove criterion one is with this so-called theorem one here. We're going to kind of reimagine the problem in terms of fitting ideals. So theorem one, the map phi in the commutative triangle above is an isomorphism of complete intersection rings over O if and only if phi of the R fitting ideal of I sub R isn't contained in M sub O of T, where M sub O is the unique maximal ideal of O. So we're, first we're going to prove theorem one. Okay, then we're going to see how to prove criterion one using theorem one. So the only if part follows immediately from the second corollary in the last video. I'll let you go check that. For the if direction, what you do is you first suppose that O equals K is a field. Since R is complete and no theorem, you can just write R as K double bracket X1 through Xn for some indeterminates X1 through Xn mod J sub R, where J sub R is some ideal here. And since T is a finite dimensional K vector space by assumption, that's the finite flat assumption, this can actually just be done in such a way as to ensure that the phi of the Xi mod J sub R, so the phi of the variables here mod JR, they actually just generate the kernel I sub T as a K vector space. Okay, so that's a quick check for you. So let's consider the following composition. So we have the map phi from R to T. But then R is a quotient of K double bracket X1 through Xn. So we have a surjective map from that ring to R as well. So let's look at the composition and we'll call the kernel of this composition J sub T. Okay, well, this kernel is definitely contained in the ideal, which we'll call I, which is the ideal generated by X1 through Xn. And we're gonna assume, uh, because we're allowed to given the theorem that we started with in this talk today, that phi of the R fitting ideal of I sub R is zero. Um, if you unwind all the definitions, what that's telling you is that there have to be polynomials G sub i j here, so in k double bracket x1 through xn, such that the sum of the G i j x j is r in j sub r, so j sub r is what we modded out by here to get r, so zero here under this map, for i equals one through n, but that debt of the G sub i j's aren't in j sub t, so they're kind of like zero here, but they're not zero here, they're not zero after applying the full composition. Okay, so that's what this means. All right, so, uh, well, we know that X sub I generate I mod J sub T as a K vector space um, by assumption and by our things we've already discovered. And so that tells you that the X I X J generate I squared mod I J T as a K vector space. That's just a quick little algebra check there. 
So every element of k double bracket x1 through xn mod i j t can be represented by a polynomial of total degree at most two. All right. So that means you should be able to find polynomials p sub i and q sub i of total degree at most two, such that p sub i is equivalent to the sum over j of g sub i j x j mod i j t, because that's that's a polynomial mod i j t. And q sub i is equivalent to x i cubed mod i j t for the same reason. For i equals one through n, let's let f sub i be x sub i cubed minus the q sub i we just found plus the p sub i we just found. It's a quick check, just basically using definitions and basic properties of all the polynomials involved that f sub i is actually in jt and it equals the sum over j of big G sub i j x sub j where big G sub i j is equivalent to little g sub i j mod j sub d, all right? So let's conclude the proof of theorem one now. Let's set B equal to K bracket X1 through Xn mod F1 through Fn. So these Fi's are the Fi's we just found. This is a finite dimensional K vector space. The reason for that is every element of B is represented by a polynomial of degree at most two in each variable by construction. So B is Artinian. So it's a finite product of local Artinian rings. And so if you complete B producing B, I don't know, B hat and X1 through Xn, so this was our ideal I from earlier, this has to be a factor of B. That's kind of a basic algebra fact about Artinian rings. And so it's also a finite dimensional over K. But by the first corollary last video then, the B hat ideal generated by depth of the big G sub IJs has to be the unique minimal non-zero ideal of B hat. Okay, but the thing is debt of big G sub I J is equivalent to debt of little g sub i j mod j sub t, and that's not equivalent to zero, okay? So this minimal ideal cannot map to zero in t. Okay, so the unique minimal ideal here doesn't map to zero here. Um, it's a little exercise to check when actually the natural map from b hat to t is actually just an isomorphism. There's only, there's a unique minimal, uh, there's a unique minimal non-zero ideal here, and it doesn't map to zero here. So this is actually an isomorphism. Okay. Uh, well, look, actually, uh, you completed B at an ideal, and B has the same number of generators as relations. So what this tells you is actually that T is a complete intersection over K. And it also tells you that J sub T, which is the ideal generated by F1 through Fn, lives in IJT plus JR. So this is all just unwinding definitions of things we've said so far. But then, I mean, if you look at this kind of inclusion here, you find by Nakayama's lemma that JT actually has to be JR, right? And so phi is actually an isomorphism, okay? Because phi is a map from what? K double bracket X1 through Xn. Objective onto T, okay? And it has current like J and AR, okay? By this. So it has to be an isomorphism, all right? Um, so this proves things over K. If you want things over O, what you do is you play with tensor products and the lemma above that kind of allows you to move from uh, working over fields to working over arbitrary DVRs, all right? So uh, let's now approve criterion one. Let's go back and review criterion one actually. So our criterion one, we wanna show this inequality right here. And then we also want to show that it's an equality if and only if phi is an isomorphism of complete intersection rings. O here is a complete DVR and the congruence ideal A to sub T isn't zero. Okay, so let's prove that. It's not too hard now that we have the theorem. So let's show the inequality first. If you go to proposition one part one from I believe the last video, um, or if you just recall, the R fitting ideal of I sub R is certainly contained in the R annihilator of I sub R. Okay. Um, if you look at phi as a map from IR, it turns out it surjects onto e, uh, IT. That's not hard to see at all because the basically because the triangle commutes. And so phi of the R annihilator of I sub R actually has to be contained in the T annihilator of I sub T. Okay. And so now we have kind of a string here we, we can look at. So that means pi sub R of the R fitting ideal of I sub R is by the commutativity of the triangle, pi sub T of phi of the R fitting ideal of I sub R uh, by this here, that's contained in pi sub t of the t annihilator of i sub t, which is by definition eta sub t. And here's a quick little check for you. This is an easy one. Eta sub t is nothing but um, the maximal ideal of O 
to the power the O length of O mod A to sub D. This is actually kind of an uninteresting statement here, although it's going to end up being crucial. Okay, so check this. All right, so pi R of the R fitting ideal of I sub R lives here. That's what we've discovered. All right, but uh, you can view O as an R algebra just via the map pi sub R. And then this is kind of a basic um, algebra exercise that you run into when you first study tensor products. I sub R tensor O over R is nothing but I sub R mod I sub R squared. And so if you go back and look at proposition one, I believe in the last video, part two, you discover that pi sub R of the R fitting ideal of I sub R is the O fitting ideal of I sub R mod I sub R squared. You're sort of tensoring up to O here, but then you get, you, you end up replacing I sub R by this, by this fact here. Okay, but then the proposition says that this guy here is just M sub O to the O length of I sub R mod I sub R squared power. That was in the proposition, exactly. Okay, um, but that tells you that this length has to be less than or equal to this length because of this inclusion here. But that's the inequality we're trying to prove, right? Okay, so the inequality follows. Now, if phi is an isomorphism of complete intersection rings by the second corollary last video, you might recall this, phi of the R fitting ideal of I sub R is the T annihilator of I sub T. And so our inequality is actually an equality because this containment here is actually an equality. And so these lengths here, these powers of M sub O have to match. Okay, and that's it. Um, well, okay, sorry, we have to do the converse. I forgot it was an if and only if for a second. To show the converse, if we assume those two lengths are equal, uh, what does that say? If you kind of just look at the strings of, of inequalities and equalities we developed above, you see that that means that pi sub r of the r fitting ideal of i sub r is pi sub t of the t annihilator of i sub t. Um, it's kind of a quick check, although I won't go into the details here, and it uses the non-triviality of a sub t that we're assuming. Remember, we're assuming a to sub t isn't zero. You can check using this um, that I sub T intersect the T annihilator of I sub T actually is zero. It's a straightforward check, just believe me, or go check the details. I'm probably there in Cornell Silverman Stevens is my guess. Well, uh, what that tells you is that the map pi sub T viewed as a map on the T annihilator of I sub T, the A to sub T is actually an isomorphism, okay? Because the kernel intersect this annihilator is zero. So this map has to be an isomorphism, all right? So what does that tell you? Well, you know that pi sub t of phi of the R fitting ideal of I sub R is pi sub R of the R fitting ideal of I sub R by the commutativity of the triangle. And you know that's pi sub t of t annihilator of I sub t. So in particular, these guys are equal. Uh, what you find then is that this, so phi of the R fitting ideal of I sub R is just the t annihilator of I sub t because this map is an isomorphism. You can kind of kill it with its inverse, for example. Okay. Well, if this is true, I mean, this is a non-zero sub O module of T that can't be contained in M sub O of T. And the reason for that is because T mod the T annihilator of I sub T injects canonically into O endomorphisms of I sub T, but this is just torsion free, right? As an O module, okay? So definitely this guy cannot be contained in the maximal ideal of O times T. But then by theorem one, what do you know? It's, it's got to be an isomorphism of, of complete intersection rings because the criterion was uh, uh, you're, an, uh, you're an isomorphism of complete intersection rings if and only if, let's just go back up so we can recall here, if and only if phi, sub the R, the phi of the R fitting ideal of I sub R isn't contained in M sub O of T. Well, that's just what we showed, right? That's just what we showed right here. Okay. This guy isn't contained here because this is torsion free, basically. Okay, so that's it. Um, I think we're gonna move on to criterion two next video, which is the J structure criterion on isomorphisms of complete intersection rings. And so I'll see you all then and thank you for watching.